Failing to ask can sometimes mean that you're asking to fail. Time to ditch the macho mindset, don't you think? I'm going to be talking about no man is an island. Money can't buy love, and yet it's generally accepted that the lack of it can destroy love. A man's life is not defined by how much money he has, and yet the lack of it can send him down a path of ignominy. With the looming global recession and even depression, it's no wonder I find myself reflecting on money more and more these days. What cuts should I prepare to make? Was that expenditure frivolous or frugal? Has enough been done to support those facing a tougher situation than myself? There are findings that show that the Great Recession, which began in 2007, could be linked to more than 10,000 suicides across North America and Europe. The study by the British Journal of Psychiatry showed that between 2008 and 2010, suicide rates soared in these parts of the world, with a four times higher increase in the suicides amongst men than women. It would be ostrich-like of us not to anticipate that the economic pressures brought about by COVID-19 will not induce similar or greater pressures than that induced by the Great Recession. So, what are we to do apart from bracing ourselves for the inevitable? It's instructive that although the male and female populations were in the Great Recession together, the statistics show that there was something in their gender disposition and or outlook that made the difference, four times the difference actually. To this end, might I suggest that it is at least not automatic that when the economy goes up, or rather goes down, suicide rates have to go up. We can position ourselves to ride the storm. As we mark Mental Health Awareness Week, it's time we realize that no man is an island. Men in particular must learn to adopt a more help-seeking approach to life, especially in times of challenges. We must relearn what true strength is. It's not weakness to ask for help. On the contrary, this may be the advantage women have over men. Now is the time to locate what is of value and to be prepared to let go of the excess weight. Call it a wartime mindset. This will ensure we put life first and last and not the transient things in between. Yeah, uh, Kenny, well, I agree with you, but I also, we also need to understand that uh, the way we learn and teach these days also, um, you know, says a lot about this suicide rate. You find out that um, people are not also you know, taught about disadvantages of failure. So that's why I was telling somebody, you know, sometimes past that um, if you are, if you make first class or through life and then you graduate, you're very successful. And the, the tendency for such person to commit suicide when failure comes knocking or when challenges comes knocking is very high, higher than that other person who stumbled and fumbled and then eventually, you know, got it right. You know, your children, these days there are no more fail. You know, it is, uh, he's, he's challenged, he needs to do well. And so that child also growing up, actually he never really knew what challenges is, uh, challenges are. And so that's why you find that in some cases also, we say street sense, street sensibility. You need to understand it and also learn to strive a balance. And people that actually grew up, go check the suicide rates also and the figures and the, the way most of these people grew up. You find out that they never had been able to, they've never encountered challenges. Some of them, they've, you know, dad is always there, mom is always there, I love you and I love you. I have a friend, sorry, I'm just rounding up, who is a, a, a clinical psychologist in America. And then he said, that some of the things that they come to complain to her about. And it's like, go to Nigeria. These are normal daily occurrence. And then the person is crying that, oh, the world no longer loves me. Nobody has told me I love you in the past two weeks. And so I, I want to commit suicide. You know, so I, I think they also need to begin to borrow, you know, from some of us. Or uh, from this <laughs> part of the world. Are you not being macho again? No, it's not about being macho. No, it's not about itself. being macho. Yeah. That's, that's because you now make it look like suicide is no, not no, part of no, us. No, what yeah. I'm saying is that's mm. fiction. But okay. you find out that go check the record of some of these people. Yeah. Challenges. Yeah. They are not. They've I, never. I think. I think I'll speak to it. Um, and uh, thank you, Kenneth, for this wonderful advocacy. Because I, I, you know, we we live in a society where men seem to think that um, you know. Um, it is my role to provide, to provide, protect. And to protect, and therefore, if I'm unable to do that, 
That means I uh, have failed. I failed. You know, but um, the you and know, some uh, women also yeah. believe. Oh, if you are, and they push their men. Yes, yeah. Um, so we need to, men need to be, you know, when a man is on the soft side, people say, ah, oh, you're behaving like a woman. Yeah. Um, so society and upbringing has taught, uh, taught men to be more um, reclusive, to hide their emotions and not to be open about certain things. And I think we need to understand that, um, as someone said, you know, speaking from the, time of, from the point of business failure and failure generally, that um, failure is like the greatest um, lesson teacher ever. Um, yeah. And then we should, we should understand that um, I had a boss once where I made a biggest mistake in my career one time. And uh, he started his presentation. It was, a, it was a, like a board meeting, a group meeting. I started by putting a Mecca, my picture on the, on the big wall, and the mistake that I made. And, and everybody was like laughing at me. Then the next slide, he said, but this is why I love a Mecca. A Mecca is not afraid of mistakes. And, he, and he, he, you know, he said this thing, make a brand new mistake every day. Oh, wow. Don't repeat the That's ones you made. And, and then every, everybody in the hall turned and everyone was looking at me again. I became the hero. <laughs> so for, for, from being the, from zero to hero almost yes. instantly. Yeah, and I think people, you know, it's one of the things you were saying that people need to be socialized into learning how to ask for help. People don't know how to do that. Men especially don't know how to do that. And it's just a challenging for women, you know, there's a sort of a stigma attached around, you know, uh, when mental health, which is beginning to lift. But I think that until more and more people are taught you can ask for help, it's not a yeah. sign of weakness. Um, people are just, you know, um, going to continue to, 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 to hide their feelings. Um, you know, going back to, I remember... Um, when we were uh, much younger, someone said, she said to her mother one day, oh, you know, honestly, I think I need to go and see a psychologist. And all her mother kept God forbid, God forbid, because that's the way we see it. It's seen as a sign of um, weakness. So I, I absolutely agree. I think it's important for people to learn, to be socialized, to learn, to be able to ask um, for help. Yeah. I mean, Chuka, do you think now that we're looking at an economic recession, uh, do you think men are going to be under more pressure now? Um, there are less men under pressure now because, in any case, the mindset is changing. Um, but um, I don't know. I, 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 I somehow think that uh, it, it's, it's really funny, but I told somebody the other day that maybe all this new wave, you know, two children instead of five, uh, makes children more emotionally dependent <laughs> on, on, on very clear signs of love and uh, whatever. I mean, when we were five in a family, we just um, had to, you Turn know, get things going, actually. And then you learn to yeah. be tough. Um, I believe that there's such a thing as emotional toughness. And I don't know how it works, but I know that that's how I live my life. I'm not sure why, but okay. it, it's something I've just always felt that it has to be like that. And I still feel so. Oh, yeah, but I have to, be good to look into how, how you came to be like huh? that. But we're out of time on this segment. Well, speaking of putting first things first, this is where we set our priorities right by making room to hear your feedback on our advocacies. On a new order, JJ says, this is what we have become experts at doing. All talk and complain and no action. While still in a spiral, that country is a failed project. He goes on to say, I'm tired of listening. Aren't you tired of talking? 60 years of systematic regression. Believe it or not, JJ, talking, listening and action go hand in hand. Action without talk can soon become mindless action, don't you think? Do keep listening and sharing your mind with us. On the same topic, others have this to say. Odinaka Chuku Onyebuchi says, I enjoyed every moment of this program. Connection or corruption? I remember Libra saying that. How do we stop them? Because the whole thing seems one-sided. Also, Simeon B says, great show, good job. I pray the electorates get sense and stop voting incompetent and inept politicians into power. Thank you, Odinaka. Thank you, Simeon. We must be relentless in our national dialogue for change. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Aisha, our freshest panelists, sets us on, a, on the right path 
with her inspirational advocacy on envisioning not just a new Nigeria, but a new Africa. Welcome on board, Aisha. Thank you, Akene. 